Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! You'll probably have noticed that today's newspaper front pages have been focusing heavily on Traingate, first brought to you by this programme yesterday afternoon. Well, today, an exasperated Jeremy Corbyn had an angry exchange with one of our team, Darren McCaffrey. Uh, he quizzed the Labour leader about his claims of a ram train versus Sir Richard Branson tweeting images which seem to show the opposite. Here's what happened. Jeremy, just getting back to this, this train issue, I know it's not something... Well, no, can we move on, please? We're discussing the NHS today. Well, We're discussing the NHS. Can we have an NHS question, please? Can we have an NHS question? Jeremy, we live in a free country. We, I know... I'm entitled to ask you I'm very well aware we live in a free country, and I'm very proud to live in a free country. So can I ask you As are you. I want to ask, not what you want me to ask you. Well, we've called a press conference on the NHS, and I really hoped that you'd be able to find a question on the NHS, but, but if you can't, we'll take another one. OK, OK, good stuff. Um, ju just cause, because I think lots of people watching what's happened the last 24 hours are not able to kind of tee it all together, to, to, to kind of square the circle in a sense, that you are on the train, and the, the CCTV images show you walking by empty, reserved, and unreserved seats. So what, at 10 past 11, that was before you made that film saying the train was full. Why did you not sit in one of those seats? Because they were reserved seats. No, there or, were, there were, there were I'm glad you've watched the CCTV yeah. so carefully. It's really important to issue this, absolutely crucial. It's the future of the whole nation and the NHS. But let's get, let's get to the details of it. Yes, I did walk through the train. Yes, I did look for two empty seats together so I could sit down with my wife to talk to her. That wasn't possible. And so I went to the end of the train. The train manager, who was a very nice gentleman, came along and we had a chat about the problems of overcrowding and regulations on the train. And he said he would see what he could do, because after he'd already offered me an upgrade to first class, which I declined, he then very kindly did find some seats. And after 42 minutes, I went back through the train to the seats that he'd allocated. We sat down there and we then conducted a lot of preparatory work for our visit to Newcastle. Westminster to bring in uh, Darren for us. Now, he really didn't want to answer your questions, did he? Uh, no, he didn't, uh, Kay. Uh, and not necessarily for the first time. You know, Jeremy Corbyn has got a relatively hostile uh, approach uh, and relationship with uh, most of the media. I think, you know, he was making a point that he was there to talk about the National Health Service, you know, his attempts or his plan to renationalise it uh, if he gets into power, you know, essentially to stop the private provision of any services within the NHS so that everything is provided, not just free at the point of delivery, but indeed by uh, the state. However, as you say, it's on the front page of all the papers uh, today. It's been the big political story of the last 24 hours. Essentially, what did happen on that train and we have to remember you know it was Jeremy Corbyn who started all of this by filming uh, that footage on the train and that led to of course this footage emerging yesterday tweeted uh, personally by Richard Branson uh, which shows that Jeremy Corbyn clearly at one stage did get a seat uh, what we did learn Kay is actually we, we learned something new uh, in that uh, that answer that he did give in the sense that he conceded that there were some empty seats uh, not just the, which is not two together. Um, so maybe it wasn't quite as jam-packed as he initially had suggested. There's been a slight change to his story in the last uh, 24 hours. Also interesting, it should be said, that the Information Commissioner's Office have confirmed that they're now probing uh, whether Virgin Trains may have actually broken the Data Protection Act by releasing those images, and that investigation is currently underway. But it's not just Jeremy Corbyn who's facing uh, questions today. Uh, questions, too, of his leadership rival, Owen Smith, uh, over the language that he's used. Uh, now, essentially, the accusation is that he was referring to Jeremy Corbyn as a lunatic last night in a speech in Hammersmith. Let's have a look at the quote, precisely what he did say, okay? He said, uh, what you won't get from me is some, you know, lunatic at the top of the Labour Party. You'll have someone who tries to form a coherent narrative about what's wrong with Britain. Now, Jeremy Corbyn says that is insulting. He should apologise. It's... Uh, he says, um, you know, is not good because it's related to mental health issues. But Owen Smith's got a slightly different version of events. This is what he told Sky News this morning. I was talking about myself and uh, somebody had said I'd been running around like a lunatic earlier on. Look, 
poor choice of words on my part. If anybody's been offended by that, I'm very sorry. Uh, but I was simply making the points. I think we need a, a sensible Labour Party, one that is going to appeal right across the country. What is interesting, though, AK, okay, is that what in the last 24 hours or so, we've really had the kind of leadership election within the Labour Party encapsulated in those deep divisions personally between Jeremy Corbyn and Owen Smith reflected in the, uh, the wider party. A difference on policy issues. Well, Owen Smith's been talking about Brexit today and how he wants to stop it, essentially. Clearly not where Jeremy Corbyn is. And also this sense about Jeremy Corbyn's leadership reflected in that train gate incident. Those who don't like him say it's a sign of his incompetence, they can't even pull off a political stunt. Uh, those that support him say, well, you know, this is what Jeremy Corbyn's all about. It's about Jeremy Corbyn versus big business. It's about nationalisation versus private train companies. So essentially, even though it's a bit of a strange story, it is an August story, but it does happen to encapsulate the debate we're seeing within Labour. And you know what? We've still got a month of this to go. Certainly do. I think we've got a hustings planned as well, haven't we? For now, thanks so much indeed, Darren. Thank you. In time, videos emerged of a British backpacker who was murdered in Northern Ireland related terrorism offences. More on that to come. Also, at least 50 people are reported to have died in an earthquake in central Italy. Urgent rescue efforts underway. And Jeremy Corbyn has reacted angrily as Sky News asked him about his controversial train seat protocol. Uh, lots of you offering views on that, including Mary Carter, who's tweeting me this afternoon. Hello to you, Mary, saying, Darren. Our Darren McCaffrey will be getting himself as bowed from Mr Corbyn's news conference. Good dogged reporting. Yeah, we thought so. Uh, we're going to be staying with that, uh, that train gate story. Today's newspapers covered it widely. But what does it say about the Labour leader? Some argue it puts uh, focus on an important discussion about nationalising the railways. Others say it exposed the Corbyn campaign as dishonest. So is it the end of the line for Mr Corbyn's leadership? See what we did there? Joined by Guardian column. Ms. Dawn Foster and former Labour strategist John McTurnan. Hello to you both. Uh, Dawn, Hello. to you, first of all. If this had been Ed Miliband, it would have been very damaging. Stuff like this doesn't seem to stick to uh, Mr Corbyn. Why is that? I think, I think partly because Corbyn is seen as a lot more honest and people uh, people liked seeing him on the floor of the train because it exposed uh, a, a lot of the feelings that they had about the train services they get on every day. And I think also a lot of people saw through um, the actual Virgin PR coup. Richard Branson clearly makes a lot of money from the fact that we have privatised rail. So for Corbyn to speak out in favour of nationalisation and for Virgin to then turn around and actually uh, try and dispute his, uh, his version of events was clearly an attack on on, on Corbyn's policies and a lot of uh, and nationalisation is actually a very popular policy so um, it's no wonder that, uh, that, that Virgin Trains East Coast are rattled. Yeah but if he says that the trains ran packed and then we see images of the train and it doesn't look to be that does that not challenge who he is and, and his, uh, how honest he is? I mean, there are two things. One, uh, the, the Virgin were very, very specific about which, which parts of CCTV footage they gave out, whereas people on, on the train who spoke to The Guardian uh, yesterday and today have corroborated that at the beginning um, it, 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 it was mayhem, and actually Corbyn and his team weren't able to get seats together until they actually moved people into first class. So I think Virgin have been very selective, and obviously the footage from Corbyn came at the beginning when the train was very, very fact. And lo a lot of people came forward and said that they, they were also sat alongside Corbyn in the vestibules, in the carriages. John McTurnan, you see that people are talking about the semantics of whether it was Coach F or Coach yeah. H and, you know, how many people actually you can move up into first class in order to get three dozen yeah. people together or whatever. You know, should, we, should we be talking about this sort of stuff with a pot potential leader of the party as a leader of the party continues to want to be? Oh, well, look, Don uh, put her finger on the problem for Jeremy Corbyn. He portrays himself as a different politician, an honest politician, and he's been caught out in a lie. That's the absolute worst thing for, for somebody who claims to be honest, to be proven to be a liar. Uh, and that's the issue. Um, his other problem is uh, that it's actually quite a, mem a memorable thing. This is very like that time. Remember it when David Cameron cycled to work, I had a car following behind him with his suit and his shoes and his briefcase and his papers. Uh, he's got that the smack of hypocrisy. It's something that's very mockable. Um, and, you know, in the end, this kind of thing uh, is very bad for him because it proves he is just a politician like all the rest. And it also, um, 
it doesn't get us talking about railway nationalisation. It gets us, which is a silly policy, it gets us talking about Corbyn's honesty and his incompetence. If you're going on a train journey and you want to sit together, how about using the free reservation service that Virgin Trains offer? Dawn, he's been caught out being economical with the actuality. I, I, I don't agree. Um, I, sp I spoke to several people on the train who corroborated uh, Corbyn's version of events. I mean, I don't think nationalisation is a silly policy. I think John McTurner will find that the public don't agree it's a silly policy. I think also the problem is that, I mean, I've been on trains a lot. I'm a disabled person and I always try and book in advance. It's very, very difficult. You have to normally book at least 12 weeks in advance to get uh, seats on these on these uh, sort of services. And, uh, you know, obviously Jeremy Corbyn wouldn't have known 12 weeks in advance that he would be at Huston with Owen Smith. Nobody could have predicted that, apart from some people in the Labour Party who were pushing for Corbyn to be pushed out beforehand. But I think the problem as well is that a lot, a lot of people in the public care about rail, contrary to what John McTernan says. And for most people, this is a kind of a small, a small media bubble, uh, you know, uh, like fiasco that's been cooked up. And most people actually won't care about it. I don't think it will follow uh, people around like David Cameron cycling to work. So I think, you know, I think, I think it says a lot more about the media than it does about Jeremy Corbyn. And and I think we will find that most people don't care. And you know, jo jo John McTernan and, and, and his and his colleagues should focus on the fact that yet again they are going to lose an election to Jeremy Corbyn. What's and it they say won't about even the media, to Dawn? Just to clarify, what's it say about the media that we're covering a story that we've been given two sides of the story and we're covering both of them? That's a bad thing. No, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think the level of coverage given to one small story about a train when, for instance, you know, other things are going on day in, day out. It's not what it's about, though, instance, is it? It's yeah. about whether or not the leader of a political party has been caught lying or not. It's not about whether he was on a train. Yes, and as I said, as I said, you know, um, certain parts of the media have pointed out that many people have corroborated his story. The only people not doing so are Virgin Trains East Coast, who stand to make a lot of money from Jeremy Corbyn, not, not um, and nationalisation never coming into power, never coming into power and play. John, it's not fair. People keep pick, the media keeps picking on Jeremy Corbyn because he's an easy target. Oh, look, they keep picking on Jeremy Corbyn because he offers so many easy targets. It's the sheer incompetence from, you know, uh, from not booking seats through to lying about there being him having to sit on the floor to being found out and defending the lie and then coming up with whatever this ridiculous briefing that, that Dawn Foss is giving. Um, Virgin East Coast uh, pay a dividend to the Department for Transport for running that service. So the notion that there's some kind of subsidy, that there's some kind of public money going to, to Virgin for, this for running this railway uh, is ludicrous. Um, the point in the end comes down to this. People take a view of a leader on their judgment. And it's very hard to know what they do when they're a prime minister. So you look at what judgment do you show when you're the leader of the opposition? Well, to tell a lie is the worst form of misjudgment. Uh, to think it'd be a, a funny idea to do this, to make Virgin look bad, to have get a little viral video out. I mean, this is in the media because Jeremy Corbyn made this into a, v a media story with his video that he hoped would go viral, that he hoped to get his message across. Well, he's got a message across, not the one he wanted, which is very often what he does. He gets a message across, not the one he wants, which is that his judgment is questionable, he's been caught out lying. When you caught, you know, First rule of politics, don't lie. Second rule of politics, if you lie, don't get caught. And the third rule is, don't be surprised if you lie about somebody, they come back and tell the truth about you. And that's what Virgin have done. And the, the, the way that uh, Jeremy Corbyn has reacted like a scalded cat uh, to the notion that he should actually answer a question about what he was doing and how he did it and why he lied and all those things. Well, people make up their own mind about these kinds of things. And dishonesty is a very, very poor character trait. And that... Uh, in the end is what will come out. A laughable form of dishonesty, uh, believing that in some way Virgin would just shut up about a lie being told about them. I mean, if you go for it, if you go for a public company, they may all come for you. Dawn, is he going to be able to continue to be um, as successful as he is with the grassroots of the party? He's managed to get uh, Labour Party membership up to something like half a million. Or when this sort of situation happens and uh, rightly or wrongly members of the press as you put it and uh, Virgin or whoever it might be next time uh, hold up a mirror, is that going to start to cause problems for him? No, I don't think so. I mean, John McTernan was talking about incompetence, and he would know a lot about incompetence, having repeatedly run uh, campaigns that the Labour Party have lost. 
And I think he could learn a lot from Jeremy Corbyn and his huge popularity. We're going into yet another Labour, Labour Party leadership election that Corbyn will win again. And yet again, the Labour okay. right are failing to learn lessons on why Corbyn is so popular. And the reason why Corbyn is popular is because he does appeal to the grassroots. So while Virgin might be trying not to corroborate his story, a lot of people do actually really like Jeremy Corbyn. A lot of people do think that nationalisation is the way forward. And a lot of people uh, w w w will actually not really care about this. Uh, a okay. lot of people believe Jeremy, and so that's what's happened. Okay. Jeremy will win again. OK, thank you. Final word. We started with you, so final word from you, John. Um, if a, a man who wants to run a nationalised railway should be able to book a seat for himself on a train, if you can't book a seat on a train, how can you have the competence to actually run a railway? Good to talk to both of you. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Keep your thoughts coming in on Twitter as well. In fact, uh, in the Yucatan, watching us from Mexico today, saying that they've just enjoyed that debate on Jeremy Corbyn.